Well, we're here in the Lexus CT200H. That name just inspires nothing is what it inspires. I rather like this car. Do you? The CT200H by Maytag is the best washing machine out there. Well, what do you, you can't have it all, Brad. This is an efficient luxury car. It's not fast. It looks nice though. It does look nice, I'll give you that. There are different drive modes like a Prius. The drivetrain is all Prius, but with a nice wrapper on it. Uh, it's got like eco mode, normal mode, you can do an EV mode. And my favorite, sport. Oh yeah, the sport mode, right. We're not gonna be using that one. I used it all the time when I drove. I don't car. know why, it drives fine in eco mode. No, sport's better. 30. Please look, accelerate. Why? Oh, what are you doing? <laughs> I'm saving the environment, okay? In a nice luxury car. So you have a little bit of country club cred. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it drives nice. I like the suspension. The steering's quite nice. How's so this is the least expensive Lexus you could buy. It starts uh, just above $30,000. And this one, of course, has all the options. So it's just a touch, a few dollars under 40000 in terms of the uh, the quality of the interior, I mean, it's a Lexus. Yep. You know, it's it's not necessarily LS, but it's uh, it's very nice. Everything is made well. This so this has the exterior stitching, which, as we've discussed with other cars, is pulled off better here than you know I've seen elsewhere. But uh, yeah, everything fits well together. Very clean dash, which I like. It's just extremely simple, and it's not trying to overwhelm you with buttons or you know, complicated technology, so. It's got this. Now, uh, what would you guys cross shop this against? I think I would be looking at the uh, the diesel Audi A3, for sure. Yeah, probably a Mercedes B-Class. Yeah, the new B-Class, when, when it gets here, will be uh, definitely cross shop on this. Um, otherwise, there's not too much that's luxury and small, so it's a, it's a pretty small segment, I'd say. Well, that's one of the cool things about this, is that it should fit for Canada really well, because it's this small little five-door hatchback you know and it actually has quite a bit of room in, in the back and I mean it's very European even though it's a Japanese car in terms of its approach to you know motoring that's what we want to say <laughs> and I think uh, for me the thing that I like most about this car is that for 99% of any of the driving you would do in Canada you feel just nice in the car as mm -hmm. Mike was saying the interior is nice it handles nice um, it's got enough power it's you know not the fastest thing on the planet but, uh, you know, for as a place to spend your time when you're commuting or when you're picking up the kids or whatever, it's great. Well, Michael, you were saying that the drivetrain on this thing is from a Prius. So do you think it's worth the extra money to walk from a Prius to this? I would spend the extra, I think it's about three or $4,000. Yeah, I would think so. I, I would spend it. Just for the, even the resale value is great. Yeah. Uh, I think it's a, it's a much better interior. It's a more... It's a more standard interior, and it's, and it's a Lexus interior, but you've also got the Lexus badge mm -hmm. when you buy this thing. I love that it, uh, I love hybrids when they shut off at uh, stoplights, because you can, you can just hear people complimenting you when they walk by. <laughs> All right, guys, so for the money, Mike? Uh, yeah, I really dig it. Brad? Yeah, I like it. I like, the, I like it's a European mentality. Brian? I like it because it's small. I would not buy it because of the drivetrain. And uh, yeah, I uh, I spend hours and hours on the Lexus configurator trying to find one that suits me just fine. If they made it in dark green, I'd be completely sold. Mm -hmm.